Hi everyone. Today we will see how to use Hugging Face Inference API. Now what is this Inference API? This Inference API allows us to access the transformer models which are already hosted on Hugging Face Model Hub using an API so that we don't need to worry about deploying those you know heavy models. For example, if you take any Hugging Face transformer model, right, you can take anything from their model hub, it is going to be minimum few hundred of MB and you can't commit that particular model to even let's say GitHub repo, you need to dockerize it. So it, it brings a lot of complexities, right? Deploying these machine learning models. But what you need to focus, you need to focus on building your application and iterate faster, right? So if that is the case, you can use Hugging Face Inference API. So how does it work actually? So first of all, you know, uh, there are different plan and you get some 1 million input character free every month. So you can definitely you know, explore uh, this particular thing. And as I said, it's an API. So you will be sending an API request. You will be telling which particular model you want to access. And finally, you will be sending a data to that model and you get some response. I will show you the demo, what I mean exactly. So let's go to, you know, uh, the models, Hugging Face Models Hub. And you can see there are different tasks on the left side. And for each of these tasks, you will get some models, right? So let's expand this task list. And you could see there are some computer vision tasks there are some natural language processing tasks. So I will pick up a simple natural language processing task, like let's say a text classification, right? So if I click on text classification, what will happen? All the models available for the text classification will be filtered here. And you will see by default, they will be sorted by the most download thing. And here you could see this is the model. And if you, you know, so this is nothing but this is a user who actually uploaded this model. And this is the name of the model. So if you click on this uh, thing, you will, uh, you know, come to the model page. We can also call it a, uh, sorry, we also call it model card page. Okay. Now in this page, on the left side, you will see the details of the model. That details usually, you know, uh, for example, it will have reference to some Git repo or the reference paper using which actually this particular model is got created. And there will be some information about the output or the labels of the models. And also you will have some code snippet that how can you use that particular model in your code, right? That is on the left side. On the right side, you can literally try this model, right? So let's say here we can enter something and we can try this model. So let's say I can type, um, sorry, yeah. So let's I type, type something here, right? I am saying that movie was awesome and let's compute it. And you could see the label two is getting the highest score. Now what is label two? Let's look at the left side. You could see the zero is a negative, one is a neutral and the second is the positive. So it means the label two is actually a positive. And so that is why you got a high score because it's a positive sentence, right? So let's say the movie was waste of time. Now let's again compute. Now you see this time we have label zero high score, right? And what is the label zero is a negative. So this is how you can even try yourself here that, you know, how that particular model work. Now let's say you want to integrate this model in your Python code. So what you can do, you can use an inference API. So if you see here, the deploy section, when you click on the deploy section, you get the inference API. Let's click on that inference API. This is the code. You can have code in Python, JavaScript, and even the curl code, right? Let's focus on Python code. And you can see it's a simple API request, right? And, uh, but you will notice that here in the header, you need to pass some authorization information, right? And this is where is nothing but your token, a bearer token. Now, how do you create such a token? First of all, you can see already have some list of tokens, which are I created, right? If you have account, you can also create. So let's say we want to create the new token. So here you see new access token. Let's click on that new access token. Once you click on that new access token, here is a new token. Let's, uh, we will give something name to it. Let's say YouTube paste so that I can identify it. And I will go only read only permission that I just want to use read only. Write means I don't want to upload any model here on this hugging face. Let's say I just want to read a particular model. So Let's generate the token and you will get this particular token here. You can also copy that token from here or we can go back to that previous page. 
okay here was this page right let's try again use an inference api and now let's select the token that we just created this is the token we just created right if you want you can see also how that token looks like so if you click on show api token you can see this is our token so let's copy this code snippet and try in a you know notebook let's say collab notebook and see so i just copied this thing let's you know go here and i'm going to paste it here this particular thing and let me put this output also down here so we will go through the uh, you know code so let me clear the any output i have so what is the first thing first thing definitely we want to import a request library because we're going to make an api request the second thing is a url where we want to send a request and which is pretty straightforward we are sending to this particular model the request right and here is our authorization detail this is our own token so that hugging face identify who is making that particular request and finally we have a function called query which receives some kind of payload or data right and using this request library we're going to make a post request to this particular url which is the model url also pass our headers which is our authorization details and the finally the payload the data that we want to send to the model so that model can make a prediction and finally you get the response and this response in the json format you get in return so that is the very simple api function this query does right and that's how does our payload look like you can see the payload is nothing but a json which has one key input and here we can pass a this particular text right so let's test it let's run this thing right because we already have everything we just copied it we didn't do anything now you see we ran that code and we got some output here if you look at the output output is a two-dimensional list right because we only have a one example that's what we sent here only one example we only have this one inner list right so let's see the output of that only one inner so i'm going to take the first element of the output which is nothing but our first example output now if you look at the first example output is also one list right and what is it it is a list of dictionary what is the each element of that uh, list that dictionary which has two things one is the label and the other is the score so the output that you get is actually for every label what score you got so, it, so for this particular sentence seems to be which is positive you got a high score for the this particular label label two now let's do one thing right since when you get this particular response we want to sort it and we want to find out which label has the highest score so let's add some kind of a post processing on top of it so we know this is actually a list where each element is a dictionary we're going to use this sorted function python um, inbuilt function we're going to pass what exactly we want to sort which is nothing but our list and then the next thing is actually called key the key is nothing but the criteria that should be used to sort this particular list so the criteria here we are specifying the criteria is actually one lambda function what does that lambda function does that that lambda function is going to act on every element of our list right so here is what is happening so this lambda is going to receive the every element which is nothing but we call it as a d because it's a dictionary and we actually want to sort as per the d of score which is nothing but the score key of that particular dictionary that's what it's simple thing right if you are familiar with the lambda it should be okay for you and the next parameter which is the reverse is equal to true because we want to sort in a descending order because we want to get the one has the highest score right so let's run this thing and you could see we got the first element as a label two because which has the highest score because since we sorted by the score in a descending order so we got it right now the next thing is that so you might want might want to again uh, do some post processing because this label two label one doesn't make any sense but you know right that label two is actually positive label one is actually neutral so you can create some dictionary which is nothing but the mapping between the label and the actual label right you know which is you know introduce kind of label right so we will do that thing so first thing so this sorted output we see it has it is a list right because we sorted that list but we only care about now first element why because the first element will be having the highest number of scores so we simply sorted output we take that first element let's we call it as a prediction so that we get that label too here once we got the label two we declare this mapping dictionary and finally we use this label mapping and pass our label prediction so that we get into the return 
that label 2 is actually positive some bit of post processing this is actually not needed to show but i just wanted to give you a complete example that is the reason uh, i did this thing so hope you find it useful that you know you don't need to worry about deploying that particular model and all these things when you are building an application you can just simply test that application using your inference api okay and then later you can think of you know maybe deploying your own model or even you can use the same api which is scalable right thank you i hope you uh, like the video if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe